Welcome, welcome. Good evening. My name is Novella Ford. I manage public programs here at the Schomburg Center. To that end, we thank you for joining us uh, for tonight's Between the Lines author series featuring Kia Corthron, author of The Castle Cross the Magna Carta. She will be in conversation with Pulitzer Prize winning cultural critic Margot Jefferson, author of the recent memoir Negro Land. So Kia is also a playwright whose works have premiered in New York and across the U.S. as well as in London. As a playwright, Corthron has received numerous awards, including several for her body of work, the Wyndham Campbell Prize for Drama, among others. Joining her tonight, the winner of the Pulitzer Prize for Criticism, Margot Jefferson, was for years a book and arts critic for Newsweek and the New York Times. Without further ado, please welcome Margot Jefferson and Kia Corthron, who will begin with a reading from The Castle Across the Magna Carta. Both boys stop coloring to look up and gape at Elliot. My father was a porter, like him. And colored men can be engineers and firemen, too. The children look down at their pictures, then back up at Elliot, blinking. Elliot asks gently, you boys want to tell me what happened? On. And me and Daddy come running to the door. Her voice sound like we ought to come running to the door. And a police stand in there. And policemen say, you kiss a right girl, boy. Policemen look mad. Policemen say, Ginny, tell her Daddy we was kissing. Policemen say, you know that's a white girl. You know that's a white girl. And policeman got a gun in his pocket. He keeps tapping it. And then they put the handcuffs on me, click. And they put me in the paddy wagon. And mama crying and me crying. And then they drive. And then they park. They park a long time. And then come Max in the handcuffs crying. They put him in the paddy wagon with me. His mama crying. And in the jail, they punch us in the tummy. They punch us in the legs in the back a long time. Bang, bang, bang. My tummy hurt. And every day we say, can we see our mama? And they say, should have thought of that when you go raping little white girls. And then can I ask you a question? Of course. Elliot stoops next to the child and Max cups his hand around his own mouth and Elliot's ear. When my mama kiss me, that don't count as rape, do it? It only rape when I kiss back, right? It is a novel profoundly researched, so grounded in, in history, in, in historical fact. Um, so would you actually, for this scene that you read, give us the factual background and talk and, and tell us how, you know, how you, how you converted it, basically? So yes, yeah, so it was these two little boys that had kissed these two little girls, and they were held incommunicado for six days and were sent away for, you know, to the reformatory. And it is basically chronological. Um, because it goes across generations, in the beginning, there are many grandparents talking about World War I. So, you know, <laughs> these wars are shadowing. The, the book begins, actually, when a 13-year-old white boy in rural Alabama is teaching his 18-year-old deaf brother sign language. And that's actually where it all starts because uh, they are two of the four main characters. And so BJ, who is the, uh, the older brother, the deaf brother, uh, yeah, it's when he becomes, starts, uh, becomes a person of language. Surprising and bold move that you, um, a woman writer, would choose, um, you know, four male characters. But one thing that I got from a book called, it was Anecdotes of the Deaf, and um, this, this actually goes back to your question about writing about men, because one of them uh, that I read um, had to do with uh, something about the, the deaf men learn quickly that in the urinal you don't aim for the pool because at the bottom because it's really loud <laughs> and like they learn it from the way hearing men look around them. <laughs> so that was actually really great to put on my book because it was something about deaf culture and about urinal culture that I knew nothing, knew about, nothing. about. So <laughs> Fresh information. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. Some people have told me that who have, have read it that, that they're very clear every moment exactly where they are. And that may be a theater thing, but for me, clarity is kind of everything that I want to. Um, I'm not going to spoon feed it. You're going to feel what you're going to feel. 
but I will give you all the information to go to that place. Well, I, I, my four main characters, I still love them all, all of them, because they all have their humanity and they've all made their mistakes and one in particular made a terrible, terrible, terrible mistake. Um, but uh, I don't believe that we are just black, flat, black and white, flat characters. It's, uh, and I didn't mean that racial black and white, but just that we are all complex. And I wanted to explore that. Yeah. So thank you. Uh, I encourage you again, get the book. It is totally worth it.